Welcome to the SL350 QFRI Wireless Active Infrared Installation and Alignment Setup video. First, remove the covers on the transmitter and receiver. Loosen the cover lock screws with a Phillips head screwdriver. Pop covers to open and pull. Remove the main unit from its chassis. Turn the optical unit 90 degrees and loosen screws on both sides. Pull the upper part of the main unit and raise to remove. Locate the screw knockout on the back boxes. There are six of them. Using a screwdriver or a similar tool, break the knockouts, all six as shown. Mark your drill points to mount on a wall or flat surface. The recommended mounting height to detect humans is 0.7 to 1 meter. Drill holes to secure back box to a wall or flat surface. Screw back boxes on your wall or flat surface. Note the Innovonics chip location is the top of the back box. Battery location is on the bottom. The wall flat surface mount should look just like this. Add batteries to transmitter and receiver back boxes. Add additional batteries for extended use here. Push the reset buttons on the Innovonics transmitter and receiver chips to self-learn. Remove the main beam as shown. Take the wire connectors on the back box and push through the grommet holes on the main unit. Line up back box and main unit together. Make sure units are secured together. Tighten back tamper screw. Not doing this will cause a malfunction of wall tamper. The tighter you make the screw makes the grommet push upward into the tamper. Here's the back tamper of the photo beam. The back tamper and grommet need to line up to close. Secure back tamper screw after tightening. Screw in main unit to back box on all four sides. Connect the optical lens back on the main unit. Connect the matching wires together. Once complete, we will start the alignment process. Repeat steps on the other back box main unit reassembly and wiring.
Here are site survey hints to planning the location of the detector. What does this system protect? Perimeter line? Just around the building? Between building and perimeter? How big is the site? Calculate the, de the detection distance required. Then consider how many units are required. Are there any potential false or missed alarms? Are there any bushes, trees, vehicles, or other objects to obstruct the beam pattern? Confirm the detection area can be covered by a camera. Mismatch of detection area and camera view result in operators not seeing the crucial image on the monitor. The detection area should be within camera view. Location of the photoelectric detector. When the vertical detection pattern, the unit should be installed at the proper location to have the beam hit the target properly. Confirm the ground level is flat. Do not install the unit on an unstable surface or pole in a location where sufficient stability cannot be ensured. When installing on a slope, the receiver should be mounted on the high side of the slope to avoid sunlight. Install the unit at least one meter away from the wall that may be running parallel to the beam to avoid the reflection of the beam that can cause false alarms or missed alarms. Before installation, check to see if there is anything or if there will be anything in the future which may block the beams. A tree may be swayed by winds and a branch may block the beam. A small tree now will grow up and may later block the beam after several months. Also consider equipment or materials may be stacked in the way of the beams, or someone may park a vehicle in front of the beam. If there is a fence or a wall in the area to be monitored, ensure that the detectors are far enough away from it so that intruders cannot jump over the beams or a cat on the wall doesn't make false alarms. After confirming installation location, this is the area that we are protecting. Start the alignment process by aligning the top beam heads first. Place the beam blocking plate located inside the beam cover on the bottom set of beam heads. Open up the tamper switch to enable alignment mode. If left closed, you will not get any voltage on the output. Now we're going to use the sniper viewfinder to align the beams. This is how to look into the viewfinder. Use your left eye from the right side and your right eye from the left side. Now let's conduct the rough alignment using sniper viewfinder. Use both dials for rough and fine beam alignments. Repeat this process on other upper beam. Once you're in alignment, connect the voltmeter. Set the voltmeter on DC voltage. You're measuring maximum of 3.1 volts. Volts between 2.5 and 3.1 is good. It is best practice to get as close to 3.1 volts as possible. Remove the plate and repeat the alignment process on the bottom beam. Now you're ready to conduct a walk test. Dips in voltage when breaking the beams means you have a confirmed detection. Tighten the tamper switch to disable the alignment. Let's review the beam frequency channels. Selecting the correct beam frequency, the four-channel beam frequency selector can be used to avoid unwanted crosstalk 
that can occur when using multiple photoelectric detectors for long distance or beam stacking applications. To select between four separate beam frequencies, use the switch provided. Make sure the receiver and transmitter that are facing each other are set to the same channel. Note, more than double stacked applications is not possible. Please note channel 1 position, channel 2 position, channel 3 position, and channel 4 position. Selecting the correct beam frequency for long distance applications. Note, always switch the frequencies two channels apart. Since receiver C may receive the infrared beam from transmitter A, select the frequencies as shown below. Here's how to select the correct beam frequency for double stacked applications. Notes, always switch the frequencies two channels apart when stacking units on top of each other, as shown below. The unit is set on channel 1, while the lower is on channel 3. Channels 2 and 4 could have also been used. Since receiver B may receive the infrared beam from transmitter A, select the frequencies as shown. Here's how to select the correct beam frequency for double stack long distance applications. Notes: always switch the frequencies two channels apart when stacking units on top of each other, as shown below. The, the upper unit is set on channel one, while the lower is on channel three. See upper unit using channel two, while the lower is on channel four. Here's how to select the correct beam frequency for perimeter applications. Notes: always switch the frequencies two channels apart. Set up the transmitters and receivers as shown below and select the frequencies as noted. Here's how to select the correct beam frequency for double stacked perimeter applications. Add, always switch the frequencies two channels apart when stacking units on top of each other as shown below. The upper unit is set on channel 1 while the lower is on channel 3. See upper unit using channel 2 while the lower is using channel 4. Optional settings for beam interruption adjustment. Initial setting is at 50 milliseconds. According to the speed of a supposed target, you select one specific setting out of four steps. Set the beam interruption adjustment switches of the receiver according to the speed of the human object to detect. Optional settings for battery saving timer. Alarm output activation is limited to two minutes by a timer. Even if there are continuous alarm events, the alarm output operates only once in the, the, per the timer period. Caution, remove all batteries prior to replacing new ones. If this is not followed, the low battery indicator LED will not reset and continues to blink. Optional setting for intermittent output function. When wireless configuration is being used, which is unable to determine whether the alarm output continues, setting the intermittent output function to the on position turns on the intermittent out alarm output. This configures the wireless transmitter to send alarms at specific time intervals. Optional settings for DQ output environmental disqualification. DQ will send a trouble signal when the beam strength is below acceptable levels for more than 20 seconds due to rain, snow, or heavy fog. For additional North and South American support, contact 1-800-966-7839 or visit www.optexamerica.com.